When you think of criminals, you probably have ruthless goons, robbers, and murderers in mind. However, there are other lawbreakers in history that have cheated a lot of people and committed elaborate crimes. Let's take a look at some of the biggest fraudsters and criminals in history. From Geraldine Elizabeth Carmichael to Charles Keating, here are 15 horrible scammers caught red-handed. Number 15. Geraldine Elizabeth Carmichael Geraldine Elizabeth Carmichael had been conning people before she went for her most elaborate scam. She started out by creating fake identities and committing petty crimes such as check forgery. Some of her aliases include the widow of a NASA engineer and the daughter of an Indiana farmer. She was also purportedly involved in a counterfeit operation and was wanted by the federal authorities. However, the biggest heist she was known for was a scam involving the 20th Century Motor Car Corporation with its flagship vehicle, the Dale. The vehicle's initial prototype was a three-wheeled, two-seater automobile designed by Dale Clift, hence its name. It was endorsed at the time as the best car ever built. It was marketed as a lightweight, safe, high-tech automobile that sold for only $2,000, or roughly $10,000 today. It attracted a lot of investors who thought it would be the next big thing. But unfortunately, Carmichael immediately went into hiding with all the money. It turned out that everything was a fraud, and Carmichael's corporation didn't have a permit to manufacture cars at all. She managed to stay on the run with her children until April 12, 1975, when she was caught in Miami. She went on trial for grand theft and fraud, and was ultimately sentenced to 32 months for the Dale scam. She was released after three years and was put on parole. Carmichael died in 2004, but many remember her and her crimes to this day. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. George C. Parker If you know anyone who has fallen for a scam before, sometimes it's not because they're not being vigilant. It may be hard to admit, but there are times when the fraudsters just know what to do to have their way with a victim. For instance, would you believe that someone tried to sell the Brooklyn Bridge, the Statue of Liberty, and Ulysses Grant's tomb? I know, it sounds crazy and no one would fall for the scam today, but in the 1800s, one con man managed to successfully sell these famous places to clueless people. Born on March 16, 1860, George C. Parker found an opportunity in New York City by conning people and illegally selling property that he didn't own, usually to unwary immigrants. Today, no one is gullible enough to buy such a popular establishment, but back then, Parker managed to convince people to buy the property by earning their trust. He would wait around looking for unsuspecting people and engage in a casual conversation with them. Once he thought he knew he had gained their trust, he would claim that he was the owner of the bridge and let them know how good of an investment it was. Parker would then lead them to the bridge where they would see the bridge for sale sign he set up. And that's how he got them, hook, line, and sinker. Because of the appealing benefits of the bridge, people would hand over their hard-earned money to Parker in exchange for some worthless papers. The prices to which he sold the bridge ranged between $75,000 to $50,000. Parker managed to sell the bridge twice a week for 40 long years without anyone noticing. The victims only realized that they had been conned once the police showed up after noticing the toll booths they set up on the bridge. But that's not all. Parker was incredibly good at manipulating and conning people that aside from the Brooklyn Bridge, he also managed to sell the Statue of Liberty, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and even the tomb of Ulysses Grant by posing as his grandson. Parker was finally brought to court in 1908, but he proved to be a difficult man to contain. He escaped his first arrest by calmly walking out of the courthouse wearing a sheriff's outfit. It took not two, but four attempts to finally apprehend Parker, and on December 17, 1928, he was sentenced to a mandatory life term at Sing Sing Prison. Despite the bad rap he had in the outside world, the guards and his fellow inmates enjoyed the many tales he told in prison. In fact, his crimes were so well known that people still recognize his name to this day. Number 13. Lou Blonger Born on May 13, 1849, Lou Blonger was the eighth of 13 children. He was born to a good Catholic family, and his siblings served as role models for him. But even in his childhood, it was clear that Lou wasn't a goody two-shoes. At the young age of 14, Lou illegally joined the Union Army to fight in the Civil War, and later on, he joined his older brother Sam to head west. This was where his scams began. Lou and his brothers worked together to run con games in various places in the west, and eventually they established a fraudulent operation along with other con men and scam artists. Their crimes continued for decades until finally their entire scheme was broken down in a highly publicized trial. 
Lou received seven to ten years of jail time, but just after five months of being imprisoned, Blonger died on April 20, 1924, at the age of 74. Number 12. Reed Slatkin Investing your own money is one way to make sure that you'll have funds in the future, but you have to be smart about where you will invest your money. Reed Slatkin proved that sometimes even people who you thought were trustworthy can con you. Reed Elliott Slatkin established the Reed Slatkin Investment Club. Initially, he claimed that the club was producing annual returns of 24% annually by dabbling with stock trades and investing in startup companies. But of course, these were just empty words to sweeten the deal. Reed attracted 800 investors and amassed a total amount of $593 million. In reality, the money from the investors went to waste because of failed business ventures and crazy investments, which included a theme park that was never built. Of course, Reed used a lot of the money for himself. The investors were then paid using the money from the new arrivals, and it worked like a cycle. Luckily, authorities finally noticed something shady about Reed and carried out an investigation on him. Many of the club's investors soon became suspicious, and when they tried to withdraw their funds, Reed couldn't give them anything. It wasn't long until he declared bankruptcy and faced tons of lawsuits from his angry investors. FBI and IRS soon became involved, and he was finally convicted of several counts of fraud in 2003. He was ultimately sentenced to 14 years in jail. Number 11. Jim Baker For years, Jim Baker and his wife Tammy Faye amassed a huge amount of money through their popular Christian radio and television empire. The husband and wife duo captivated millions of people through their programs, and they capitalized on it by featuring celebrities, music, and comedy. They managed to build a lavish 2,200-acre resort in Heritage, which became a big hit at the time, with 6 million visitors in 1986. However, the kingdom that they built soon crumbled when Jim Baker was indicted on federal charges after it was found out that he paid his former church secretary, Jessica Hahn, a whopping $300,000 to silence her about a sexual affair of disputed consensuality. Once the public learned about this, many were enraged and Baker was eventually sentenced to jail for 45 years. However, the former televangelist got away with only eight years of jail time in the end. Number 10. Perkin Warbeck If you like reading British history books, there's a small chance that you've already heard of Perkin Warbeck. He was involved in one of the most impudent cases of identity theft in history. It's hard to even attempt to live as someone else today with all the technology and systems that we have. However, back then, it was quite easy to convince people that you are in fact someone else. Like, let's say, the heir to the British throne. His scheme started in the late 15th century when young Warbeck assumed the identity of Richard, Duke of York, and the heir to the throne. He claimed that he lived in secrecy under the protection of loyalists and waited until it was safe for him to reveal his identity. But of course, underneath all the pretense, he was nothing but a fraud. He was later on found out as a ruse, but when he was apprehended, he already had an army of 6,000 men who supported him taking over the throne. This just goes to show that in the 1500s, it was possible for someone to have illicit riches and power just by stealing someone else's identity. Number 9. Matthew Cox Remember the guy Parker who conned people by selling them the Brooklyn Bridge and other public property? You can say that Cox is the modern version of that man. Cox illicitly earned money by falsifying documents and making it appear as if he owned many properties. He would then proceed to get mortgages on them for five to six times their actual worth. He was getting millions of dollars through this scheme, and in 2002, he was sentenced to probation for mortgage fraud. But he managed to get away with his crimes until April 10, 2007, when he pleaded guilty to 42 counts of fraud, identity theft, and probation violation. However, he did something unexpected after being imprisoned. Cox cooperated with an FBI agent and gave up information about all the shady and suspicious real estate agents and appraisers. In just a few years, the licensed mortgage brokers in Florida went from 80,000 to just 4,000. Despite helping, many were still infuriated with Cox for committing such an audacious crime. After spending years in prison, Cox started to write and tell his story to people, and many sympathized with him for having such a difficult childhood. Cox suffered from a reading disorder called dyslexia. Because of this, he had a difficult time in school, and his teachers advised him to get a job that involved his hands instead. He heeded their words and studied sculpture at the University of South Florida. After university, he decided to work as an insurance agent, but the low salary made him turn to crime. Cox continued his mortgage business because according to him, it was the very first time that his parents were proud of him. His story is honestly tragic, 
but that doesn't mean he's exempted from all his wrongdoings. Number 8. Francois and Joseph Blanc You've probably been a victim of scammers spamming your phone to get you to talk about your car's extended warranty and whatnot. Telecommunication scams are everywhere these days. But did you know that the very first happened in France in 1837? This might come off as a surprise to you considering the telephone was invented 50 years prior. But criminals can be pretty creative, as long as something gets them easy money. In the 1830s, France used optical telegraphs for communication. These telegraphs consisted of huge towers with wooden signaling arms to send messages throughout the country. However, there was one problem. People with the right connections can easily dabble with the signals and interfere with the messages being sent. This is what brothers Francois and Joseph Blanc did. The two brothers were bankers working at the stock exchange in Bordeaux, and to get ahead of their fellow traders, they hacked the telecommunications network and bribed a signaler to get information about stock market changes in Paris. The best part? The two brothers were later on caught red-handed, but because France didn't really have a law about this type of crime, they escaped jail time. Luckily, we now have elaborate laws about fraud in modern times. But to this day, these types of scams still remain a huge problem. And I seriously doubt these criminals will ever stop trying to find loopholes to scam people. Number 7. Wachovia Bank The case of Wachovia Bank remains to be one of the largest money laundering cases in history. This is yet another telemarketing scam that had hundreds of thousands of victims. But unlike the other cases where ordinary people orchestrated the crime, this time, one of the largest banks in the United States was involved. The bank was allegedly aware of payment processors creating authorized but unsigned checks on behalf of telemarketers to illicitly withdraw funds from their customers' accounts without their consent. This went on for three years. Hundreds of millions of dollars were involved in the laundering chain, and it only became possible because the bank allegedly failed to monitor cash transfers. Number 6. Charles Ponzi have you ever heard of the Ponzi scheme? If you haven't, this is how it works. It's essentially a form of fraud where scammers try to entice people to invest in a non-existent enterprise. The first investors would then be paid by the money given by newcomers. Charles Ponzi is the man behind this elaborate scheme. He was born on March 3, 1882, and he soon grew up to be an infamous swindler and con artist who dominated the United States and Canada. He promised his clients a 50% profit in less than two months or a 100% return of profits within three months. Ponzi claimed that he was getting all the returns by buying discounted postal reply coupons in another country and redeeming them at face value in the United States. Essentially, he was taking advantage of the price difference of the items in the market to make a profit. In reality, Ponzi was just paying the first wave of investors with the money paid by the second wave, and so on and so forth. His scam ran for over a year before it was completely busted, and by that time his investors had already lost a whopping $20 million. He was convicted in 1920 and was later on imprisoned. However, he got out through parole and continued his other scams. He was imprisoned once again, and at that point authorities finally got tired of him and deported him back to his native country, Italy. Number 5. The Jacob Baker Scam in 1839, a man named Jacob Baker died and left behind an estate and land tract in Pennsylvania that was worth an astonishing price of over $3 billion. And so, his heirs, who were people with the last name Baker, formed a legal association and posted ads in the newspapers asking anyone sharing the same last name to pay them money to get a share of the multi-billion dollar inheritance. Now here's the scammy part. Jacob Baker didn't exist at all, and the eye-watering $3 billion inheritance also doesn't exist. This legal association of bakers in reality were swindlers led by a con artist named William Cameron Morrow Smith. In the end, these con artists were able to bag $25 million from all the bakers living in Pennsylvania. Their scheme was only uncovered in 1936, and almost 3,000 people paid money for an imaginary inheritance. I guess if you're promised to get a large amount of money in exchange for a relatively small amount, it's pretty easy to take the risk. These swindlers might be doing something evil, but one thing is for sure, they understand human psychology and they know how to make you fall for their trick unknowingly. Number 4. Anna Sorokin Earlier we talked about a guy who tried to pose as the heir to the throne in the 15th century. However, did you know that someone managed to pull off a similar scheme recently? This is Anna Sorokin, more popularly known by her fake name, Anna Delvey. She took New York by storm and became a socialite in no time. She introduced herself as a German heiress 
but it wasn't long until this was proven false. In reality, Anna had nothing to her name, and yet she managed to stay at the most lavish hotels in New York, join the most lavish gatherings, and even had the chance to meet some of the richest and most influential people in the Big Apple. Anna Sorokin was born on January 23, 1991 to a middle-class family. She left her home country, Germany, at age 19 to get a fashion degree in Paris. And in 2013, she attended Fashion Week in New York on behalf of Purple Magazine, where she was employed at the time. After mixing in with the socialites in the Big Apple, Delvey started to look for investors to establish the Anna Delvey Foundation, which he planned to be a private club and an art foundation. While trying to look for people to invest in her project, she bounced from hotel to hotel, including 11 Howard and Mercer Hotel without paying a single one. Many believed that Delvey had a lot of money that she would soon get when she settled her inheritance. But after dodging her bills, people around her started to suspect that perhaps she was a fraud. On April 25, 2019, she was found guilty of eight charges of robbery and theft of services. She was sentenced to four to 12 years in state prison and fined $24,000 in addition to restitution charges of $199,000. But where is Anna Sorokin today? She served three years in prison and was released early for good behavior. It just so happened that Netflix paid her $320,000 for the rights to her life story, and she managed to settle the debt she amassed during her days as Anna Delvey. I would say it's still pretty amazing that she managed to con a lot of people, especially socialites in New York. Number 3. Frank Abagnale Jr. You're probably already familiar with Frank Abagnale Jr., but in case you're not, he was an infamous con artist who is now known as a writer, public speaker, and private consultant who aims to fight fraudsters. In his criminal days, he assumed the identity of a lawyer, a professor, an airline pilot, and a doctor to finesse his way out of trouble. He's also known to have passed millions in bad checks, and he did enough trouble to the point that a massive manhunt was launched for his capture. He was caught in 1969, but because of his willingness to help the authorities catch other con men and forgers, he received an early release from prison and is now living a reformed life. Number 2. Ivan Boski Born on March 6, 1937 in Detroit, Michigan, Ivan is a former American stock trader who later on turned to illicit means to gain money. He became involved in an insider trading scandal during the mid-1980s. Ivan was once known as a financial speculator, but it was revealed that he was purchasing inside information and used the info illegally to sell securities in exchange for millions of dollars worth of profit. After being found out, he was charged and pled guilty to insider trading, and he was fined a whopping $100 million and served three years in prison. In the end, he became an informant who helped the authorities to catch people who dabbled in the same crimes. Number 1. Charles Keating Born in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1923, Charles Keating served the U.S. Navy and later on got a law degree from the University of Cincinnati in 1948. He soon established a law firm and co-founded the American Financial Corporation. All of his ventures were successful, but later on, he was involved in a scam. In 1984, it was found out that he was using the funds of his federally supported bank for his own interests, including buying trash bonds and lavish political campaigns. The same year, the American Continental Corporation bought Lincoln Savings and Loan Association for $50 million. He continued to use the money for his own interests until the late 1980s when American Continental Corporation got into a difficult situation that ended up in the closure of about half of all savings and loan associations in the United States. It also led to the bankruptcy of the Federal Savings and Loan Insurance Corporation, which gave taxpayers the responsibility to pay more than $3 billion. Despite his initial influence in the U.S., he was still convicted and in prison for his crimes. Just imagine how bad it would have been if these people got away with their crimes. Who among these fraudsters surprised you the most? And do you know any other big scams in history? Let me know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.